Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison, as always. And if you're watching this video, or if you have watched these videos, the Chisholm Hunter videos in the past, then I have no doubt that sometimes you fall down rabbit holes about certain brands, about certain products. And I'm pretty similar to you. I am a watch enthusiast. And the other day, I was falling down the rabbit hole about Glass Hootie Original. It was about two weeks ago. And I was trying to figure out what makes this brand such a staple and what makes it so special. And then, after falling down the rabbit hole, I ended up on the phone to Glass Hootie Original. And surprisingly enough, I ended up flying out to the factory. <laughs> We just arrived in Dresden, which is in Germany, and pretty much it was a really stressful flight. We it's like 12 p.m. We're both knackered, yeah. but tomorrow we find out what true luxury watches are made of. On this watch visit, on this factory visit, I was blown away by some of the amazing things that went on, firstly in Glasshut as a town and also at Glasshutty Original as a factory. So let's start with a little bit about the history of this brand. Let's start at the beginning with Glasshut. And the reason I say Glasshut and not Glasshutty Original is that Glasshutty Original's origins start when Glasshut, the town, kind of started, so to speak. So Glasshut as a town used to be in the mining industry. So they'd mine for precious materials, but over time, those mining reservoirs ra ran out. They, they, they didn't have anything else to mine, so they were running out of money, and they needed to find something else, another industry to get involved in, in order to get money into Glasshut. And that is where they found horology. In 1845, the watch industry was created in Grasshut by the four founding fathers. Now, the four founding fathers are like the Jean-Claude Biver of 1845, apart from there's four of them, and they are all unbelievable watchmakers. The four founding fathers are as follows, and please uh, forgive me for my accent, I am very Scottish, but we have Ferdinand Adolf Lange, we have Julius Assmann, we have Adolf Schneiser, and we have Mortiz Grobman. Now fast forward to 1951. There was tons of watch manufacturers in Glasshut and they were all formed to make one larger conglomerate, uh, which was called GUB. And this was state owned. Now in the 1990s, GUB were actually privatized to form Glasshutty Original. Now because of this privatization, Glasshutty Original is actually the longest watch manufacturer in Glasshut with an uninterrupted history, hence making it the original. Now that we've touched on the history of Glasshutty Original and what makes it the original watch manufacturer of Glasshut, let's get onto the watchmaking side of things. How are these watches made? What is special about the movements in these pieces? Because frankly guys, there were some of these points that blew my mind. Now when it comes to the watch industry, there is a hazy area. There's kind of a gray area when it comes to talking about in-house movements. And that's because a lot of these watch manufacturers will buy an ETA movement a Salita movement, something that's maybe a little bit more mass produced, and then slap a rotor in the back and say that it's in-house, which isn't necessarily true. It might be 40% in-house, but it's not entirely in-house, and I, I, would, I would struggle to find any brand that was entirely in-house at this stage. But Glasshutty Original are 95% confirmed in-house for their watch, and that includes their movements. They actually produced one of the smallest screws in the world for their movements. It's insane. And that 5% that's not in-house would maybe be the rubies, would maybe be the sapphire crystal glass, the raw materials that you can't really create, you kind of need to buy in. So the respect for these Glasswitty originals, in my eyes, it rose tenfold. To add to that, when you are putting together a movement of any kind, of course, you need, you need tools, you need tweezers, you need to pick up the small screws, you need eyeglasses, you need all these little different components. And what's interesting is the majority of the tools are actually created in-house as well. So not only do you have an in-house movement, you have an in-house set of tools to create that in-house movement. It's like inception. Next up was the perlage room. So let's talk a little bit about what perlaging actually is and why it was used in the first place. Perlage is a French word for pearl pattern. This is a decorative pattern consisting of small circles that look a little bit like perils. And this is applied to the surface of, let's say the movement or the rotor by grinding. Now this perlage design is actually applied by hand and it takes a person actually sitting there to, to craft this design. But what 
really surprised me and shocked me actually is the amount of duds that were just lying on a board to the right hand side of this lady that was doing the perlage design. I couldn't even see the mistakes that were made on those little pieces of metal. But through the microscope, they could see that they weren't perfect. So they chucked them away. And it's that level of detail that makes something more expensive. The perlage design in history was actually used to collect potential dust molecules that were going to get into the movement. But I can guarantee you by being in the factory that it's probably the cleanest surface, the cleanest place that I have ever been. And in fact, some of the rooms are actually regulated by temperature. So they're not allowed to drop below or past a certain point. And that's how precise these guys are. Now I went into a couple of rooms that I probably wasn't allowed in and I can tell you that the cleanliness and care that these guys take is second to none. After an incredible factory visit, after speaking to the CEO of Grasshutti Original, after having lunch on the floor of the factory, not physically on the floor of the factory, but on the flat factory floor, there was a table, you guys get it. I pretty much got my pick of the litter. I got to pick which Glasshutti Original watch I wanted to film, feel, try on, all the above. I was like a kid in a candy store. So there's two specific models that I went for. And I think they're cool for a couple of different reasons. The first watch that I snatched at the first opportunity was the new Glasshutti Original CQ Chrono. Now, the Glasshutti Original CQ is obviously a really popular range. Everybody knows it. Everybody loves it. It was founded in 1969. We actually saw the original Glasshutti Original CQ. I'll say original one more time, just for those at the back. But it was fabulous. And the fact that it's based on a piece of art, a piece of history is a really nice touch. Next up, we have the Glasshutti Original 70s. Now I held a bunch of them and I, I picked up and wore a bunch of them, but the one that stood out to me was the new green dial. And it's a little bit lighter than a forest green. I would say it's more angling towards yellow actually, but it's not overly, it's not overly flash. And I quite like that. If you've been watching the channel for long enough, you'll know that I like things that are a bit off piste things that are a bit off the beaten path, things that not everyone would go for. They're not very common. I like being a little bit unique. And that's why I was kind of drawn to this model. On top of that, they had a bunch of limited editions and I actually spoke to, I won't name any names here, but I did speak to a couple of people trying to get my hands on these limited editions and I couldn't get them because they're just so in demand at the moment. There was a there was a blue one that I'll put on the screen at the moment that blew me away. And the 70s, it's just something unique. On top of this, we actually visited the watch museum in Glass Hoot, and there was tons of models. We, we managed to see a load of, of really special watches. But what stood out to me above all else was the 70s models, the, the historic 70s models. And I could join clear lines between the new models and the old versions. They both shared the same DNA and that was so beautiful and lovely to see that they're still pulling from their historical watches. And that kind of brings me on to the logo of Glass City Original. It's a double G and one G faces backwards and one G faces forwards. And the reasons for this is that Glass City Original are looking forward, they're looking to the future, but they also keep a foot in their history and they pull design and inspiration and don't forget their fantastic history. And this all combined makes Glass City Original a really special brand. To be honest guys, a year on from creating this channel, I did not expect to be in Germany visiting the Glass Hutti Original factory. That is just obscene. I honestly would never have expected this and it's all because of your guys' support. So genuinely, I want to thank you guys so much. I really hope you found this video insightful. You learned something that maybe you didn't know and you had to have a newfound appreciation for Glass Hutti Original Watches. If you could, please hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram, Chisholm Hunter Watches, and I'll see you next time.